Hello, hello. Um, I'm joined here. My name is Bhavya. I'm joined here with Kala, and we are going to talk about managing design and construction documents in support, specifically for architectural teams, how they can um how they can organize themselves and get better at knowing all the information in one place. I'm gonna give it all over to Kala and take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, before we get to that, um, we can head to, um, you know, the, the whole webinar is going to last about 20 minutes. If we have any questions, uh, we can leave that till the end. Um, we will be doing a demo right after as well, after a couple of slides. And if you need to get in contact with us, please um, reach out to us on this link. And I would be your point of contact. So just moving into like why companies use us, these are a couple of things that we have noticed that a lot of the companies do require and want us to be able to have all the projects together, being able to use a cloud-based uh, um, solution uh, rather than stagnant and also being not able to like install everything because that also is a big hurdle for a lot of the companies and integration is like the number one thing that we've noticed in companies that they require now because we have so many tools now and we need to be able to integrate tools that talk to each other so we have a seamless communication between external tools as well and i think that is one of the reasons why these companies have chosen to use us so when we look at like the common ch dis, uh, challenges that we've seen in our construction or architectural industry, uh, a lot of these are very common that we know, but as we increase our technology in our workspace, there tends to be more um, newer issues that we tend to uh, find. For example, like we have, we still tend to see disconnection between owners, architects, GCs, and in the field, sometimes due to not having the right technology or having a technology that is limited by factors like we've seen like licenses, user accounts, or even sheet counts, which leads us to further hurdles like budget. Um, and we all know how that goes. And um, also just leading into that by not having the right technology creates further miscommunication, also creates fiction caused by uh, system switching. Because if the more systems we have and we have to switch between because they're not able to talk to each other, creating further friction. Uh, reviewers lack uh, the um, um, adoptability to have like more markup tools as well, um, decentralized work, uh, work space and manually generating reports. And we wanna move towards automatically generating a lot of the reports so we have a seamless in, uh, communication and finding the inefficiencies in our project, um, which also helps us with our ROI in terms of time, um, if, if it's done automatically for us. And also when we work with external stakeholders, a lot of the times we have to invite them to our ecosystem. And if they sometimes, again, as I mentioned previously, if we don't have a license, they're not able to have that. And we have to download, send it out again, and then it goes back to our, you know, the friction caused by switching systems. It leads us, basically, it's an ecosystem of challenges that we tend to encounter if we don't have the right technology. So let's lead into why use Zipboard for document management. So this diagram, as you can see, the reason why I wanted to show you this is because we're creating an ecosystem within an ecosystem. And what I mean by this is if you have external um, you know, tools, we work with you in actually syncing our product with that, depending on you know, the technology we're using. So we are creating a partnership and it allows you to like streamline document management, review, issue tracking on a single dashboard. You can also have the ability to centralize the experience uh, of organization in construction document, communication, you know, photos, videos, um, all the things that you tend to have during that process of um, in, ten, in the architectural world. Um, moving into like uh, how utilizing powerful markup and annotation uh, features can actually comprehend document reviews and streamline your sign-up processes as well. And we do have electronic uh, ways of you having your stamps, 
uh, there as well, which you will see in um, Bavia's uh, demonstration that we will show. It allows you to effortly uh, navigate projects, decision-making with fully record um, audit trails for enhanced projects, uh, oversight and creating the accountability as projects as well. And furthermore, it's just like, it's just easy to navigate. You don't have trainings and then you have all the ecosystem like just talking to each other. And I think one of the mo most important things that I've seen, the schedule and managed document review efficiency, it, um, it's just intuitive platform. Um, you, you don't need a lot of training sessions with us to actually be able to, even when you send out a link to your external stakeholders, they're seamlessly be able to actually just go through their process of all the reviews and markups that you wanna provide. So. I know I've spoken a lot and there's a lot of information. So I'm gonna move this demo to Bavia, which now it will allow you to see the challenges that people are facing and how Zipboard has been helping. And now you can see it in live demonstration, what it actually does. Bavia, I'm gonna stop sharing. And, right. share, and then you can Let share. Let me share my screen. Yep. Be able to see it? Yep. Okay, great. So, so in Zipboard, uh, we are trying to bring three things together, which we've seen is often in disconnected systems, document management, uh, document reviews and markups, and all the issue tracking and all the comments and information related to those documents in one place. So you're not struggling to switch between systems, which uh, Kala just mentioned uh, all of those. So I'm going to show you the, this is where your dashboard is, where all your projects live. So you essentially uh, create projects, invite your uh, stakeholders, and you do not get charged for each stakeholder that you invite. And they all have same visibility. Uh, there's one set of collaborators who have same visibility on those projects. So here I have a project, uh, which is a drawing project for a school, which is a fictional project here. But what you see here is that I have a set of people that are able to see everything that I have put together here. What we um, enable is a, a space for you to upload your documents and be able to see them in different views. So you can switch from a table to a Kanban view. You can bring your documents by uploading them, just you know, adding a PDF document directly or you could sync up with, let's say, SharePoint or your own server. So you do not create multiple copies of documents and you just have one single source. And also if you, for security reasons, you do not want to move the documents to our server, you actually leave them on your servers, but link them to our product. So there, there are many options available. Uh, another thing that we do is that we feel like document Documents have a life cycle in architectural projects. They may, and this is a fictional set that I have created again. They may be going from pre-design to design to design development. You know, they may be going through several stages. Maybe if you're talking about submittals, they may be going from, you know, construction documentation to actually GC approving them or architects approving them. They, they have a life cycle. So we want you to define those life cycles and have your own definitions for every project. So that is what you can do here, that you can rename these and say, that this is my design ideation stage document. So you can actually categorize and be able to see where they are in, uh, in your life cycle. Another thing that you can do is, let's say you've uploaded this document, you can decide who you want. You can set up deadlines for people and you can decide who you want them, uh, who you want to review this document. So you can assign it to people. They will get an email notification. They will get a notification in app. They will be a set up. You can set up a deadline like here. I have a deadline. Oh, I'm already in. Yeah, so I'm setting a deadline for 30th May. And, uh, you know, I also want to be able to easily search these documents so I can set up my tags. So if I know that this is related to a particular feature or this is for electrical or MEP, so I can really categorize my documents and be able to search them easily. So this way, you're not, as an architect, chasing people to remind them this is a deadline. You're not asking people to 
give you, uh, you know, what happened to that. This is the work that the application does for you. They automatically send reminders and obviously make it easy for you to find all the documents in one place. Moving on, the next thing that we've often seen is that often your document, where your documents are housed, your management system is disconnected to your review system, which means you often have to download that file from your management system, upload to your review system, and by that time, maybe the third person that is supposed to review it, they already have the first version, not the second version, and so on. So it creates a bit of a version confusion, not a bit, quite a bit of a version confusion, and you're dealing with, uh, dealing with, oh, I don't have the updated version, I don't know what happened to it. So you're creating a dashboard here from where you can jump from document to a quick review rather than having to download, upload it to a system, invite people to a session and so on. Everybody who's part of this project, who was invited to this project is able to see this document in a browser without installing anything, without having to pay a license for anything either, so which makes it very easy, which makes it easy for people to not switch systems, not use, oh, I have this review tool, I'm gonna use this. So it's everything is right here. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the review features that we have. Um, so obviously you can zoom in, zoom out, be able to see something more clearly if you want to. And as you see, it's refreshing in real time, so it doesn't take too long to load, right? And once you are going through something, I may not be an architectural expert here, but I'll just pick something and say, okay, I want to, I want to comment on this particular node because I feel like this, uh, this needs attention and maybe even tag people and say, can you take a look at it? So this makes it easy in two different ways. A, I'm doing it at my own pace and I'm not inviting people in a real-time session, have 10 people at the same time logged in. You can do it. You can take your time, review the documents, add a note, send a notification to Harry. He will be able to open this document and say, okay, I'm gonna go back and uh, jump on it and take a look at it, right? So you're not forcing people to in long review meetings, which is another thing that I often hear that there are one to two hours of review meetings, which you don't want to uh, do. Another thing is there is a running list of commentary right here. So I can jump from one, note to another easily rather than having to again uh you know not know what is happening and uh, who is uh, commenting where so i can really jump uh, that open in a new window but uh, i can really jump from one to another i can see if somebody has replied to it i can have more people reply to it as well right so I, this just makes the whole experience kind of like a google doc for your documents but with an enhanced annotation, so you are really able to annotate and mark up on things. The few more markup tools that I'm going to show, uh, you can use a pencil, choose a thickness. You can actually even switch to like a highlight mode, like a pencil, which lets you mark up using a pen. Oh, that's a highlighter. But you, you can switch to a pencil mode, which lets you mark up using a pencil and still add a comment. Let's say you don't want to add a comment. You just want the pencil to be written. You can turn off the comments as well. So that makes it easy that if you're using uh, using a device to do this, uh, you can quickly just start adding notes quickly, right? Mm -hmm. A few more things like highlighter, which is specifically for text. So if you want to highlight any text in the document, you can highlight that uh, and then add a note or not. Again, I've disabled my comments here. A uh, few more things like arrow to, to show something or a text. Let's say you want to add text. This is something that came up uh, from our uh, some of our architects that they like to add text notes, which can uh, which can show up uh, easily that, uh, you know, this. And again, I'm not uh, the best uh, person to know what kind of comment it should be, but uh, we can actually add text notes rather than adding, um, you know, rather than adding uh, a comment box. So that becomes embedded into this tool, uh, into the sheet as well. Other thing, of course, you can erase anything that you like, depending on the permissions that you have. And uh, 
other thing is adding stamp and signature. So this is often very useful, especially for our teams which are doing submittals and they have to review and then add their stamps. So they can really go in, add a stamp and this, this is a custom stamp that has been brought in, uh, which which the org puts in. So so you're not using any stamp that you like. And then you can decide to check mark things and say, okay, this is what it is. This looks good and sign it off as well. So you're, you can add your signatures, your stamp and your check marks. So you all have it here and this can be finally printed uh, so that, no. Oh, this can finally be printed so that you can actually save this for your records or if you want to send it to somebody else, you can download this into a, a, into a PDF as well. So you have all of the comments that were added and they will all be, uh, they can all, with the stamp document, you can send it to somebody if, if you do not or save it for your own archive. Moving on to uh, the, back to the project, uh, there are a few more things that you can do in terms of even sharing with stakeholders or having visibility on stakeholders. So there are often times you're working with outside consultants. You don't want them to see all these documents, but you want one-off feedback from them, one-off review from them. What you can do is you can create a shareable link for them, which makes them A, not have to log in to the whole system, just see the document directly. Uh, and you can decide, do you want them to have a password or not for security reasons? Do you want them to see others' reviews or not? Uh, and do you want them to comment or maybe just see others' reviews and not be able to add their own comments? So you can decide based on your stakeholder how you want to create a sharing, but that makes it much more flexible for you to get uh, uh, you know, collaborate with external stakeholders, like just send them this one-off link use directly, maybe send an email here, add an email here, and well, I think you're already on this project, but I'm gonna add you here. And you know, you can really send an invite to them and they will be able to see this link. They will be able to jump off on this review. They will directly come to this view. They will start adding their notes. Uh, so it's as simple as just opening this document in a browser, not having to download, install anything, not having to pay a license, not having to, manage anything externally. You can also control uh, till how, till when do they have access. So let's say you do not want them to have access after May 30th, you can do that as well. So it makes it easy for you to control your documents and their access to different stakeholders. And of course, making it easy for them to review as well, rather than using uh, email or some other medium to communicate, they can all communicate here. One more thing, the last part is the, the, the fact that, you know, once in most systems, these comments actually live in the documents. So you're really, you can only see these comments when you actually open the documents and it becomes quite cumbersome to track them. What we bring is a neat ability to be able to see these comments in a, in a table or a Kanban view, depending on where you are. Uh, and it lets you, do multiple things. A, it lets you, it gives you an archive for all the commentary that happened on this project, right? Not just today, through several years, even after you've closed your project, let's say you need to see what decision was taken and why was it taken, you can come back to it. And it's easy to see, you know exactly where the comment was added, you can jump to it as well, but essentially you get all of it in one place. Uh, you can add more context to it, have more conversations going on. You can add, uh, you know, attachments and things like that as well to it. You can assign it to people if you feel like a certain person needs to answer for this particular comment. You can do that as well. So as a project manager, you may not have to necessarily even jump into the document. You can just do all of that from here, which makes it easy to track things, makes it easy to also filter things. So for example, I want to see all the ones all the commentaries which have been approved by GC. There's, there's none here, but uh, let's say there's something that's returned rejected. So then I know exactly which ones were rejected. I need to address these and I can do that easily and quickly from here. So that the whole process makes it easy to find information 
for every stakeholder who's part of the project. That uh, it, That's it for the portions of the areas where I'm talking about document management. We've talked about document management, which happens here in this section. We've talked about reviews, which happens in a uh, in, a, in the browser itself. And we've, then we've talked about tracking information and finding all the issues and, uh, you know, tracking it and actually uh, being able to find what is happening where. Another element and the last one, which I will say is the reporting, uh, where you can actually see how your projects are doing. So you can actually cumulatively see, okay, I want to see in the last quarter, how many issues were created, how many we actually, uh, you know, who created them, how many actually got closed and so on. So this gives you an evaluation of, okay, you know what, we need to, and there is more that is that you can do. We can customize these reports as well. But what happens is that you have a good sense of where your projects are, what they're doing, what's happening, and you're not like stuck by um, uh, you know, you're not like sensing things. Uh, you have data. You have data to know how your projects are doing, and you can predict them better. So that, the, and the I'm after this now. I'm going to talk about some of the things that we are doing in the future that will make enhance some of the experiences as well. If you notice, uh, in the uh, in the review experience today, we cannot do measurement. That's something that's coming up. We are going to start, we're going to be able to give you tools to be able to measure anything in the sheets, which makes it easy to, for estimation, for architects, or for anybody to say, okay, this is correct or not. Uh, another thing that we're working on is comparing sheets and versions, which makes it easy to see, okay, what happened with my first version and second version? What are the changes? So be able to visually see that will make it easy for you to see, okay, uh, uh, you know, what happened between the versions, quickly maybe create issues as well. Uh, the third thing that we are working on is a chat engine, uh, which is, uh, which lets you, uh, which lets you, and this is early though, but I'm, uh, as a CEO, I'm excited about some of this. Uh, is to be able to talk to your uh, project. So, you know, literally use AI to say how many documents are past their deadline. So, you know, you really exactly know what is past, what's not. So some of the, those features which will let you know and evaluate how your projects are doing. Or maybe have even more advanced reportings where you can see, can you compare my two projects? Because we do have different levels of reporting at the project level, but also at the organization level. So you you should be able to, as a manager, say how my projects are doing, where is the delay, why is the delay happening, or where is the rework happening? So some of that is what we are bringing with AI, with the help of AI, uh, which should make things easy as a manager, as an architect, as the whole uh, organization to know where are the delays and you know how can we make things better. I'm going to pause here. I think I have covered everything. Anything, Kala, that you think that we should be discussing, talking about? No, I think we've uh, you've done a great, great job covering all of it. <laughs> Wonderful. So that's it. I think uh, the last thing that I would just say is, uh, I don't know if I have the slide again, but um, that if you if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to set up a free trial, or uh, you can set up a 15 day free trial. And uh, also if you wanna reach out to sales, Kala is right here and you can reach out to us uh, again on our website uh, or at sales at zippo.co. Thank you so much. Great, thank you all, bye. Bye.